AppInfo is an awesome suite of software tools that is used widely by researchers, students, professionals for data management and research. In this video, I'm going to be showing you an easy way of using AppInfo for PC for any kind of research data analysis. I'll see you in a bit. Hi. Hi and welcome to EpiInfo for Rookies channel where I help students and researchers learn how to use EpiInfo for the management of research data. In my last video, I showed you the two ways of installing EpiInfo software on your PC. If you don't already have the EpiInfo for PC installed on your computer, you can watch this easy step-by-step -step guide to install the latest version of EpiInfo for free. If you are new to this channel, my name is Abdul Hakim and I'm a public health physician and lecturer. And in this quick tutorial, I will be describing the EpiInfo PC graphical user interface, describing our real data set, importing the data into EpiInfo, how to analyze your data, and then interpreting and saving our results. Alrighty. Let's get stuck in the Epi Info PC graphical user interface. So after launching the Epi Info for PC software, this beautiful interface um, comes up first. These are what I loosely call the six good stuffs of Epi Info PC. So with this software, you can create beautiful paper or electronic forms for data collection by clicking there. I've made a full quick video on how to do this easily. The link to that video is in the card above. All right. Next is this tab here that says enter data. Here we can use these forms created in the first tab to enter data or to enter data from uh, paper questionnaires. All right. Check out the description of this video to see useful links. The next is the tab um, there where you can create maps if you have collected geographical data. And believe me, Epi Info can help you to create simple, beautiful, and even powerful maps. Links in the description below. Then we have the powerful stat calc which is a powerful statistical calculator that can be used for several different statistical calculations like that of sample size, contingency table calculations, and power calculations, all right? Then we come to the crux of the matter here, the real reason why we're here, guys. You see these two tabs uh, below here? You can see they even have a different um, shading and it says they analyze data, right? Okay, these two are used for data analysis and that's what we want to explore here today. All right. The first one is the classical Epi Info that everybody knows and loves. All right. And the second one is this newer and much easier Epi Info, which is the Visual Dashboard. In this tutorial, we are going to be using the Visual Dashboard. All right. So let's just click on the Visual Dashboard. The Visual Dashboard has a super simple um, interface. All right. The first and the topmost thing there is what we call the title bar. All right. It carries the title of the canvas that you're working on. And if you have not yet saved, it tells you that your work is unsaved. All right. And you'll see that soon. The next here is the menu bar, all right? And it has menu icons that are arranged horizontally, okay? Then this large space that I'm standing is called the canvas, all right? This is where all the action um, happens, all right? And this is where we'll see the results of all our analysis. There are more features that I will be explaining as we go along because what we're just seeing now is what I call the lane interface, all right? By the time we import our data, we'll see more aspects that are worthy of note, all right? Describing our data. Now let's go ahead and describe um, the data that we want to use. We'll be using data from a small survey that was conducted to determine the factors associated with utilization of healthcare services in an urban community in Nigeria. Epinfo Mobile was used to collect this data and now we have the survey data in Excel. All right. So looking at this data, we can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, seven variables, right? And you know, for a standard data set like this, the columns represent each variable. All right, while the rows represent each um, case, meaning each respondent per row. All right, so the first column there is the serial number. All right, when we scroll from top to bottom, we will see that there are 154 rows of respondents, right? And we can see age, gender, marital status, education, um, whether the respondent ever used health service, and if the respondent did use the health service, how many times in the last um, 12 months? Just an easy peasy survey, all right? So for the first respondent, we can see the serial number is one, age is 16, um, he's a male, he's married, and education is primary. In this education, the value of zero means the person is not educated. One is for primary, two is for secondary, and then three is for tertiary, okay? So this guy just has a primary education. He has never used the service before. Uh, so here, zero represents no, and one represents yes. And the number of times um, ever used is obviously going to be zero since he has never used this service before. Super straightforward, right? Okay, so this is the super simple um, data that we collected in this survey. And now that we have understood um, the data, let's dive right in and import the data into Epi Info, shall we? Importing the data into Epi Info for PC. 
So we just go to the visual dashboard, all right? And we will see this quick instruction up here that says set data source now, all right? And we can either click on this arrow here to set the data source, or we can just do a right click on any part of the canvas and set the data source. When we do that, we will see this um, dialog box that just pops up. Now we'll go under where it says database type, okay? And click on the drop down arrow. And here we'll select our database type. And just see, AP Info is very powerful. Just take a look at all the different databases that you can work with when you're using AP Info. See even the famous red cap, Excel, Access, and so on. Remember, our data is in Excel, okay? So we'll just need to look for where we have Microsoft Excel, and we'll select Microsoft Excel. Next, what we're going to do is just click on Browse under here that says Data Source, all right? And navigate to our file. My own file is in my Documents folder. Wherever your own file is, just look for it, and then click on it, all right? So I'm just going to select on my own file, and then click on OK. And lastly, I will need to highlight the particular sheet that my data is in, all right? And I'll just click on OK, all right? So if you have multiple data in different sheets, you just highlight it on where the sheet is and you just click OK. And then we're good to go. Okie dokie, Arichoki. The fat canvas. As soon as we import our data into AP Info, this canvas changes from the lean canvas I told you about to what I call the fat canvas. And you see that now it has extra features. First, it shows on the title bar that this new canvas is not saved. So you can see unsaved, right? And it also now has a new selector. If you look up here, you see on the menu bar, you will see that you have a selector that allows you to toggle between analysis, data, and variables, okay? Super, super awesome. All right, this is where it starts to get very interesting. And to the right of this, you will see a small display that tells us the current data source. And you can see it's just the file that we just imported. And look, it even gives us a very important information, which is the number of records that we have. Awesome, super awesome. I notice that we also have two new features by the side. And this helps us to define the variables or for filtering uh, data. All right, just super awesome. All right, now no time to check time. Let's go to what we have been all waiting for, data analysis, all right? Analyzing the data. So remember, this data was obtained from a quick survey to determine the level of utilization of healthcare services in an urban community in Nigeria. Well, this survey had the following objectives. The first is to describe the characteristics of the respondents in the community, all right? And we have seen some of those characteristics. We've seen age, we've seen gender, we've seen education marital status, all right? So we need to describe that. The second objective is to determine the level of utilization of the health services in this community. And we have seen those two variables that were used to determine the level of education. Easy peasy objectives, easy peasy survey. So to do this, let's first look at our data, all right? So we'll click on this uh, drop down on the menu bar and select data, all right? And boom, okay? We see all our data in AP Info, all right? Super nice, this is just cool. You know, researchers always like to have a feel of their data and they want to do this by first glancing through the entire data in like a spreadsheet, all right? Remember, we're bringing our data from Excel in a spreadsheet. Now we have it looking um, like a spreadsheet also, all right? So we can also look at the variables in this um, imported data set, all right? We'll just click on the variables up there and you can see all our variables. Super cool, all right? Awesome. So let's go back to the canvas now and we go to our analysis view. Now, you don't just um, go ahead to start running any analysis on data without cleaning the data first, all right? So always clean your data first before running analysis, all right? Okay, but I have already cleaned um, this data in Excel, so um, we'll use that to save time, okay? So let's go ahead and try to achieve the first objective in our survey. And that first objective is to identify the characteristics of our respondents, all right? So looking at the data that we have, these characteristics are age, gender, marital status, and education, right? These are basic um, demographic characteristics. Okay, so this objective requires us to just describe this data. So we'll be doing descriptive statistics, right? And since we'll be dealing with description of one variable at a time, what do you think this kind of analysis is called? Well, you're correct. This is what we loosely call univariate analysis. This means that analysis will be done one variable at a time, all right? So now to remind you of basics and statistics, when you have a numeric variable like age, to describe it means to just simply summarize it, all right? 
And to summarize any numeric variable, the minimum requirement is to present that data using the best measure of central tendency. And when you put the best measure of central tendency, you also pair it with its corresponding measure of dispersion. So what we need to do is to look for the best measure of central tendency as well as its corresponding measure of dispersion. And what happens when you have a categorical variable like gender um, education? Now, to summarize that, what we will just need to do is to present their frequencies as well as their corresponding percentages. Super simple, all right? So let's start with describing the age variable. Since we want the best measure of central tendency as well as the corresponding measure of dispersion, we will need to first see all those measures and then select the best one, right? It's super simple. All right, let me show you. Now in EPI Info for PC, to do any simple analysis on the canvas, all you need to do is to add an analysis gadget. All right, and to do this, you just do a right click, a simple right click, then you see all these options. Which option are we going to choose? Yes, you see where it says add analysis gadgets in this drop down. All right, then the next thing that pops up is another list. In that list, what we're looking for is means. Okay, then we'll see this dialog box that comes up, and this dialog box is for the means gadget. So here it says means of what? All right. So what we'll do is we'll just click on the drop down and then put our variable of interest and the variable we're interested in now is uh, the age. So we'll click on um, age and click on OK and boom. All right. We have this superb gadget coming up here. You can see it. And wow, it has everything that we that we need. Is this not superb? All right. Epinfo has computed all the measures that we seek in one fell swoop. So we see that we have 154 observations. That's correct. We can see total, mean, variance, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, mode, median. Just exactly what we're looking for. Everything in one place. Super awesome. Well, now you know that we can't go ahead presenting all the statistics, right? What we need is the best measure of central tendency as well as its corresponding measure of dispersion. All right, just one measure. One measure of central tendency, one measure of dispersion. All right, so let's start with the measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and mode. Okay, so we can see that we have the mean as 25.53 years, the mode as 32 years, all right, and the median as 23 years. Very good. Which one do you think is the best measure that represents this age, the age of the respondents in this study? What do you think? All right, or let me put it in another way. Which of them best summarizes the age data? So we can see that the mean, median, as well as mode of this data are not similar. And this is a quick indication that the age data is not normally distributed. So when you have a situation like this, then the median is the best measure of central tendency. All right. Now, if the mean, median, and mode were the same or they were similar, then the mean would have been a preferable measure of central tendency. But now with the data that we have, the best measure of central tendency is the median. And if we select the median as best to represent this age data, then the corresponding measure of dispersion is going to be the intercultural range. All right. From this data, we can see that the 25th percentile, which is the first quartile, Q1, is 19, 19 years. All right. While the 75th percentile, which is the third quartile, Q3, is 32. All right. So the intercultural range will be given as Q3 minus Q1, which is 32 minus 19 and would have 13. So the median in bracket intercultural range of the age data is going to be 23 in bracket 16 years. Easy peasy. All right. Now let's try with categorical variables. OK, so this time we will do uh, the same thing. But instead of adding a means gadget, we will just add a frequency gadget since what we're looking for is the frequency and percentages of categorical variables. So what we'll do is we'll just right click again and go to add analysis gadget. All right. Then we'll click on um, frequency. Let's start with describing the gender of the respondents first. So we'll click on gender and then click on OK and boom. All right. You see our awesome um, frequency table here. This is our frequency gadget. You can see the frequency table and we can see that among the respondents, there were 72 females and 82 males. And that corresponds to 46.75% um, of the respondents being female, while 53.25% um, were males. Awesome, right? Now, the good thing about EP info is you can even do all of this at once for all the categorical variables. So let's just um, delete this. And so we'll just do a right click and add analysis gadget. And the same thing, we'll click on frequency. And here we can now select multiple variables by holding down the control button. So here we'll select gender, education, as well as marital status. Very good. 
Then we'll click on OK and boom, you can see that we have all our results all at once in one place. Okay, super awesome. Now let's quickly go to the second um, objective. All right, the second objective was to determine the level of utilization of health services in that community. All right, and the variable that was used to measure uh, this was the categorical variable that had a yes or no response, even though it was zero and one that was used. Okay, so we will just run the frequency and percentages again using the frequency gadget. I'm sure you've got the hang of it now and you know how easy it is to just do this. All right, so we'll just do it right click again, add analysis gadget, all right, and click on frequency and select the ever used variable, ever used service there. All right, and click on OK and boom again. All right, we can see our results. We can see that only 84 respondents have ever used the service, and this corresponds to 54.55%. Easy peasy. So now that we have all our results on the canvas, it's time for us to save our results and write our report. Saving your EPI info outputs. Now that we have all our results um, on the canvas, we will just go ahead and save our results and start writing our report. To do this simply, we just do a right click on the canvas and um, select send output to Word because we want to send it to Microsoft Word. Most of us use Microsoft Word to write our reports. And you see our output come out very, very beautifully in Microsoft Word. Super awesome. All right. I've not seen a software that gives a beautiful output like this on Microsoft Word. All right, then we can go ahead and make any adjustments that we want to make, uh, describe our results, describe it in whatever reporting style that we want, and we are good to go. Okie dokie, add a chalky. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to analyze our data with Epi Info for PC. In this tutorial, I showed you the graphical user interface of Epi Info for PC. I showed you how to import Excel data into Epi Info. I showed you how to analyze the data, how to export your results to MS Word for easier interpretation and report writing. All right. Now, if you have gained value with this video and you want to see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are yet to do so already. In my next video, God willing, I am going to show you how to do bivariate analysis with Epi Info for PC. But until then, peace. Check out my other awesome Epi Info videos here and here. Thanks for watching.